So I'm going to give you a demonstration of the Nightfall user interface, how to start it and how to interact with it. Um, I don't claim to be an expert, but this is what I've learned so far. Um, to get started, just follow the instructions that are on the, the Nightfall page. I've gone through all of these steps, including the Docker proxy start, which just starts up a single container that allows me to, to easily connect up. Uh, think of it like a simple DNS or domain name service uh, to hit the, the, the user interface. Um, I've done all these steps up to this point, and so what I'll do is I'll run this, um, this demo. So I'll come over to this window, and we'll watch it start up. And while that's starting up, uh, let me explain my take on what this is this is doing. It's it's firing up uh, all of these containers. Each box that's on this diagram that, that I've created is a container. Um, and the orange ones are just used intermittently just to build uh, the other pieces. So um, you have your HTTP proxy, which I've already mentioned. You have your user interface, which then hits their gateway. The gateway does the authentication, authorization, and orchestration to all the other uh, REST APIs. So you have one that talks to the database, you have another one that talks to the Ethereum accounts, you have another one that does the off-chain. It's actually simulating the Whisper um, protocol to, to the Ganache uh, local Ethereum blockchain uh, container. And then you have your zero-knowledge proof microservice API that that uh, does that. That's basically the magic that, that's happening here. So while I've been talking, it, it started up, we have, uh, it's compiled successfully. So what we can do is now we can just click on this Nightfall Docker and it will open up the user interface. By default, there's no accounts. So what I'll do is I'll create uh, Alice, but I'm lazy and I'll just type in A for the username and the password. And this is all local, so it shouldn't be a big deal. And as you can see in the background, uh, it was going through and showing you the what's happening behind the scenes. I'll create Bob or B. Create that account. So on this computer, what I'll do is I'll log on this browser, I mean, I will log in as Alice or uh, A, and you see that we have zero ERC721 tokens, no commitments against it, um, ERC20 and no commi uh, commitments against that. So let's mint um, two EY tokens. So I minted a one, I'll mint another one called two, whoops. And so now I have two tokens and let's do a commitment against that token and so I can select one and I will mint against that. This will take uh, upwards of a minute uh, and again you'll see it's happening behind the scenes and we'll wait for that to finish and there we go it has been minted and so you'll see that we only have one on this side and one commitment. We're going to mint some ops um, Let's do 30 ops coins. So it minted 30. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a commitment against one of those. And so I will do that here. And this will take 20, 30 seconds, something like that. And then what I'll do is in another browser, I will open up that same um, the same URL. It has to be another browser, not another tab. Um, it already had me signed in from the last time, but just to make sure, I'll sign in as B again. And uh, you can see I have zero of everything. I'll go back to the tab that has different ones, and I'll transfer the token from Alice to Bob. So I'm going to select the only token that I can, and I will send it to Bob. So you'll see that it goes, this goes to zero. And then we'll go ahead and transfer one of these ops coin, coins over to uh, Bob as well. And you see that goes to 28. And then if I come over here and hit refresh, you'll see that I now have, as Bob, I now have one um, ERC721 token and one ERC20 token. And by default, you have all, every user basically has full capabilities just to, to do some development, but uh, they say in their docs that this would, not how you would normally do this, um, but it's great for development so you can uh, test the different interactions and whatnot. So um, in a nutshell, that's kind of the, the Nightfall um, 
user interface is, as far as I know, uh, what they've done. It's uh, awesome that they were released to this in the public domain. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, again, I'm not an expert, but this is what I've learned. And if I can't answer your questions, we can always reach out to the EY or Nightfall team. So thank you for your time.